It is my honor now. Um, it is my honor now to introduce and invite Margot Georgiadis, the CEO of Ancestry, to have a conversation about identity and to discuss the partnership that we're working on with you. Thank you so much, Margot, for being here today. Welcome, Margot. Thank you so much. It is so great to see you here and to have you here. We started this conversation a couple of months, and it is a dream come true. Thank you so much. Um, so you're a co-host for today's event. Yes. I want to thank you for that. But I want to also ask you, why? Why did you get involved? Why does it matter? Why, why are you here supporting us? Absolutely. Well, when Claudia reached out to me and she talked about the movement she was trying to start, a positive movement about the conversation on, around Hispanic identity, it took me about a second to respond. <laughs> and I said, absolutely. Everyone's story is important. We live in a time where we're spending so much effort talking about what divides us. But we all know that we all are really very much more connected than we think. And we need to all be part of that positive narrative of change and to ensure that everybody feels that they're valued, that their stories, that their family experiences is what counts. And I think you touched on that. We are all human. And so we, as a company, have spent 30 years helping people discover and find and share their family stories. And if we can be part of creating that positive change, uh, we'd love to be part of it. You know, one of the things that also drew me in was the conversation that you had with me around some of the issues around identity yeah. within the Hispanic community. Can you share a little bit more about that conversation that we had? Because I think it really inspired me. And, and it was, um, you know, like I, I think that I told you, I was raised and born a marketer. So for me, all the, you know, like getting into uh, this country only five years ago was an entire discovery because I never knew I was Hispanic. I, uh, I, I lived happily ever after being a Mexican until I moved to the States and they were like, no, you're not a Mexican, now you're a Hispanic. And I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. Because looking at the numbers and after living 25 years in, you know, like Austria, Germany and uh, Switzerland, that where I felt really majority and minority, I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna be part of this amazing group. 60 million, 18% of the population, the biggest wallet of all. Like we're gonna be really like part of this incredible powerful group, mm -hmm. but when I, when I moved here, it didn't feel that powerful, it didn't feel that majority. And I started looking and looking around, being the marketer that I am, started looking at the data, mm -hmm. and it didn't make sense. There's an enigma there, there's a reverse marketing issue. And I think it all goes back to we not understanding our own power, not accessing our power because we don't understand our power, and because we don't understand our identity, we're fragmented and it makes sense because some of us have left our country and we don't want to be detached from our country and so we're like, from fear of losing our background, are just like attached to that sense of like, I don't want to, I don't want to connect too much, I don't want to let go and be properly Hispanic, but also because this is an invention that we didn't understand and the bubbling, the fragmentation, the people thinking the Cubans uh, don't talk to the Mexicans, don't talk to the Venezuelans, don't talk to the Colombians, that, that, that entire fragmentation seems artificial. Mm -hmm. And so I came to you looking for answers, saying like, I'm sure that at the identity level, we could do so much more um, but about being community and understanding how we have by far more in common than what we think, and that those artificial uh, bubbles yes. are just artificial, yes. and we have to bust them. Well, we're excited to be part of that. No, and, and, and uh, it is really exciting, actually, to see how we can do that transition. You have done that transition. You have done that identity for other communities. Yeah. What do you think are the lessons that you know, like we can learn from that? How do you think that this could help the Hispanic community it's, become one? We, you know, we see this all the time in the work and the research that we do, because obviously we've been at this for three decades, and people have these self-imposed assumptions and boundaries, and you talked a lot about those earlier. And what really understanding and exploring your family story more holistically does, it actually it gets you to realize that you, we're all complicated. Yeah. We're all from everywhere. And in that plurality comes the power because it's not those individual pieces of our identity, but it's what we collectively, our shared experience is what really drives the meaning. 
And what's incredible is that the research behind this, that understanding your family story is fundamentally important for your well-being. So there's been decades of research on this at venerable institutions like Edinburgh University. They've done a multi-decade study, and I'll just give you some of the research from the kids, because I think it's really important because that's our future. Yeah is when children have a deep understanding of their family story. And not just all the great people and all the successful stuff, but when you talk about the things that were tough, right? the things that we overcame, how we came together, how we went apart and we came back, those open conversations end up creating children that are more confident, yep. right? they're more resilient, they're more open to others. And actually, it's proven that they perform better scholastically. So this isn't just something that's nice to do. I believe it's a must to do for this community if we're going to help people really embrace who they are, understand that story, and realize that their story is important. And those experiences need to be shared. And we all need to be able to stand up, each and every one of us, and feel proud of having yeah. that conversation. When we do that, we're going to not just make our own lives better, we're gonna make the lives of our children better, and we're gonna make the whole community better. Because at the end of the day, we are all human. <laughs> and what, what is super interesting is for me, after having that conversation with you, I went to the Can Advertisement Festival, and we were talking about it with Tony now, um, in, in talking about like bringing Hispanics to marketers, right? Like to say like, you cannot sell anything in America without this, this community. Let's actually talk about it. Mm -hmm. And we had uh, Mark Pritchard, uh, the CMO of Procter & Gamble, and many other companies, one big wig after the other, and hosted by the Wall Street Journal. And Mark Pritchard from the Procter & Gamble started the session by saying, my name is Mark Pritchard, but actually my real name is Nikki Gonzalez. I just never wanted to say it because I wouldn't be where I am today if I would have said that. And I just don't want to have any more Nikki Gonzalez in the world having to pretend to be a Mark Pritchard. Because we just need to be proud. Mm -hmm. We just need to be proud of our history. And because of where we are, a lot of the chapters of our history have been removed. And this Hispanic Heritage Month, all of us should have felt, wow, I'm so proud to be Hispanic. Mm -hmm. Since the 16th century, we've been making strides in sports, in mining, in agriculture. We've contributed to this country tremendously. Absolutely. We have created, actually, we created the FedEx uh, service on the, you know, like the UPSs of the world that were first um, baseball league player, uh, Hispanic, was in 1902, not in the 80s. We're not newbies. We've been building this country, and we just need to know our identity. And Ancestry is an incredible partner for, uh, for us in that journey of feeling proud, uh, discovering our identity, and discovering our commonality. So I cannot be more happy to have a partner like Ancestry contributing to the Hispanic community. Let's give it one for Margot, please. Um, so you have helped other communities as well before. How, about you have, how do you think that you have helped the Hispanic community understand the story, and how do you think we can help it even further? Absolutely. We have invested a tremendous amount of money to digitize records from across uh, the Hispanic, Hispanic community. So it might surprise some of you to know that we have over 500 million records um, from across Latin America that it can enable people to understand and trace their family story. The record sets are the richest as you can imagine in Mexico and Puerto Rico, because that's where obviously we've had a lot of people seeking their family. We can take people back actually six generations. We just started a new project to digitize Catholic records, another 10 million, which will enable people to go back 10 generations. So people can truly trace their family story. They can understand where their family lived, where they went, their siblings, their jobs, right? All those things are now discoverable um, as part of our community. We also, through the DNA testing, have continued to invest to build a deeper and deeper understanding so that we're able, just in Mexico alone, to help people understand 57 communities that their family may have come from. And we do that because of this massive family tree network we've built over 30 years. We have over 110 million family trees and 11 billion ancestral connections. And so when you take a DNA test and you connect that into a tree, we can help you understand all the way back eight generations. That's what the ethnicity estimate is based on. And then the communities come because everyone's moved, right? Everyone moves, doesn't matter where you live in the world. And the communities become that 
integration of communities and it helps you understand those points in your life and you know if you're from Louisiana that's a community but those people came from France they came from Mexico they came from everywhere and they came together and so as a society being able to understand those journeys we also have all the immigration and naturalization records you can understand from those moments when your family came in how much money do they have in their pocket who much who else was with them the rich immersive details so that you're able to really explore and understand your family story and so we're just so excited to be part of this journey and this conversation and we, we our work is not done you know we're on a another decade set of missions to make sure that we can help everyone find and share their family stories. And so what I, what I, be part of this. and this is so exciting because again, because I really believe the time is now, if you see the numbers of Hispanics, there is no way that we're not going to come out as like the thriving force, as the, you know, middle class of America, as one of the, you know, like the, the, the fastest growing cohort in America. And having you as a partner is going to great, give us that great sense of unity and science that we need behind feeling proud and being together. So do we want to talk about the reality of what does it mean, this partnership that we're doing? So as Claudia and I got into a conversation of how do we change this dialogue, how do we help this community understand its identity in a new and different way, there's so many different ways to do this. So we recognize we're only one small piece, but we felt that creating a dialogue to help all the leaders in the community understand their own heritage for themselves to create that experience so they have a sense of their rich identity. For those who decide to volunteer into sharing that at an uh, anonymized level, we'll be able to show the connections between that community because I think we'll be surprised to know that people are far more connected than they really realize. Yeah. We have over 15 million people in our network and I think they're gonna realize, oh my gosh, like, I bet you a bunch of the people in that room will be related, and they actually have no idea. And they're related in ways they could have never imagined. So concretely, what we're doing is, for uh, those of you that know, we're going to gather 500 leaders, Hispanic leaders and non-Hispanic leaders at the United Nations next December 9 and 10, our national summit, where we're going to be reporting back everything we learned in the year, all the voting, all the priorities, all the plan. We're going to start changing it from framework to game plan. And there, uh, 100 of those 500 people have accepted to take the ancestry test. And they don't know the results. They will be revealed on the screen at the United Nations. In aggregate. In aggregate. <laughs> in an aggregated way. Which is super. Personal information, that's would never do that. Never. <laughs> and we're, we're in San Francisco. Absolutely. <laughs> but the, the point of the messaging there is that you pre like we predict that there are two things that we're gonna be unveiling, you're gonna be unveiling. One is the origin of the, those. The community. I the think the other piece is to contribute to the discussion you talked about before, the Mark Pritchard's type of stories. We're gonna take a, a set of leaders and they're gonna work with our professional genealogists and they're gonna work on exploring their own family story and they're gonna share it in front of the group and really start this movement about being proud of our heritage. And I was just talking to a couple people before and as we talked about this initiative, they shared I'm so influenced by my family story, the things that my family overcame, the tough choices they made, the places and ways we did things. And if we start as a collective community feeling comfortable to have that dialogue in an open way, an authentic way, in a confident way, we can shift and hopefully be part of a positive conversation in the community. To understand that we have by far more in common than what divides us and that we should start a national conversation to be proud of the national identity of Hispanics. I think that this is wonderful and I wanna thank you again for the partnership that you're doing with Ancestry for the Hispanic community. Thank you so much, Margo. You're so welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you.